an amazing afternoon, and the fact that you all volunteered to sit in a windowless room with us today is, is a distinct honor. We're going to um, we're going to reveal to you and introduce to you the new iPad. <laughs> I'm dressed kind of like Steve Jobs. That was the one. My name is Bill Dwight. I'm a city councilor in this great city. Of Welcome to Smith, welcome to Northampton, for those of you who made the trek down various roads to get here, and those of you who are from here, you know what I mean. Um, there has to be a podium, because I want to feel like I'm tenured here. Yes. Um, first of all, as you know, this is a, a charitable event, so we're asking you to be charitable. Uh, in, in the fact that this is a massive leap of faith on our part, we have, uh, we're doing this without benefit or rehearsal, and there's technology involved, and whatever crises occur, just remember we're all among friends, and, and then I'm bigger than most of you. So, so good afternoon, as I said, uh, and welcome to Screen Test, the movie trivia madness. Uh, this is Amherst Cinema on Pleasant Street Theater's first video movie fee ever. And, uh, and we, uh, you know, given the response that we've gotten, we suspect that this will get bigger and bigger every year. And the questions will get harder and harder and harder. Before we uh, begin our first round, I'd like to speak to you uh, for a minute for about, about Amherst Cinema on Pleasant Street Theater. Um, the two nonprofit independent movie houses, art houses, here in the valley, and a true treasure. And the thing is, is that, you know, the profitability, as we all know, those of us who lived around here, the profitability of the small art house theater is pretty dubious. So nonprofit systems, like the Amherst Cinema Group that eventually took over uh, Pleasant Street Theater as well, are the salvation of independent art house cinema. The only way you're going to be able to see something that isn't necessarily in 3D, they may actually have a subtitle, they may actually have a plot, and may actually move you beyond complications, is to see it in our house cinema. And there are, there are, there are, well, they're my equivalent of a church, for lack of other churches. I don't, I, and it's a place where we congregate and we savor art, you know, and with the exception of the person with the crinkly wrap being on their, their candy bar, which of course inspires homicidal thoughts in me, but, um, so, as I said, this is a benefit for uh, Amherst Cinema and Pleasant Street Theater, and as such, of course, you're asked, if you're not already to join, you can become members, and membership actually has its privileges, as in all cases of membership, and, um, there's, you're able to do that up in the lobby, you can check that out during intermission, um, the Amherst Cinemas and Plum Street Theater show about 190 films on the five screens that they have here in the Valley annually. So that's their gift to us. I think a reciprocal gift might be in order if you're capable of scraping something together for that. Um, let's see. We have, I have a lot of. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, give a special thanks to one of the major sponsors today for um, the People's Bank. Um, they're just, they're going to be Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's cut to the chase here. Let's see. That's a film term. So we'll see. Um, actually, I, I, there are a lot of friends here among uh, in, in the teams here. I used to. I, some people may wonder what qualifies me for this event, other than the fact that I wield such great power here in Northampton. And that, that actually has nothing to do with anything, and it's also not true. But I worked proudly as a video clerk for 25 years, a quarter of a century, almost as long as video was available at Pleasant Street Video here in Virginia. It's, it's the only reason I have friends today, because of all the free rentals that I would give for this person. And I know that my, my boss is actually here, I think, today. My uh, former boss, Dana Gentis, who was on one of the teams. I'd be worried 
format for today's movie, Trivia Madness, uh, we'll begin with scene one. It's broken down into scenes. Uh, with six takes or rounds of four teams competing against each other, and I have it under authority that the takes were arranged fairly, and the team's names were drawn out of a hat. At the end of scene one, there will be six teams that will go on to scene two. It's a process of elimination, and uh, there will be two takes or rounds with three teams competing, and the winners of scene two will go on to the championship round. There will also uh, um, there will be an audience participation portion, too, so there's opportunities to win more prizes and things and such like. All right, let's get to the real reason you got here. That you came here. Um, I'm going on my iPad. Let's see about this guy. Um, yeah, this technology rocks. Okay. Uh, so, the guest host for tonight, or this afternoon, or whatever we're calling this crew today, right now, I'm pretty glad to say, I'm not sure. The, uh, is none other than John. Hodgman. Wait for it. Wait for it. John Hodgman, self-described minor television character, author, rock contour. He's a regular contributor on The Daily Show. Uh, he's the reason that we all own Macintosh products. <laughs> he actually made PC sexy. In his own special way. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome John Hodgson. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. I'll see you all later. Thank you, Bill. I'll look at my check, okay? I appreciate your time. Uh, 
sponsored by uh, Doug Amy and Susan Rose. They're young, they're in love, 
and they kill people. <laughs> I have a guess, Bill. Is it Watership Down? <laughs> Do not know the answer. Time is ticking down. 30 seconds. What, how much time? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 6 again, 5, 4, 3. All right, time is up. Mark it down. Time is up. Mark it down. Time is up. Mark it down. National War Killers, Bonnie and Clyde, National War Killers. True romance. I thought that said time day. Answer is fine. Bonnie and Clyde. Louis Nathan. F.D.W. I seriously thought you would have written time day. I was so excited. Next question. Next question, Bill. What is the name of the young man who kills people to feed the carnivorous plant in Little Shop of Horror? What is the name of the young man who kills people to feed the carnivorous plants in Little Shop of Horrors? We all know this one. We all know this one. And by the way, this is the easy round, just to give you Four, three, two, one. Mark this down. Boom, boom, boom. Three winners, one loser. Seymour is the answer. All right. Name the film in which Leonardo DiCaprio plays a thief who steals secrets from people's subconscious by invading their dreams while they sleep. Okay, this is a movie. Name the film in which Leonardo DiCaprio plays a thief who steals secrets from people's subconscious by evading their dreams while they sleep. And kills people. <laughs> this is one of the rare movies without Helen Hunt in it. Paulette? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what, what's with the rearrangement? Mark it down. Or the correct answer. Yes. Boom, 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 boom. Four on the floor. Yes. All right, all right, all right. In what musical are three sailors on leave in New York? In what musical are three sailors on leave in New York? I believe the answer is Midnight Cowboy. <laughs> It is not hinged, it is not Midnight Cowboy. Yeah, you don't want to see The last detail, I think, is the name of this movie. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, three sailors on the loose in New York. Yes, it is not the last detail. Markers down, we have answers. On the town, on the town, anchors away, on the town. The right answer is on the town. We have three winners, Cassavetes, Cuties, Louie Natives, and the Allen Smithies. Sorry, side of this. I was flying. And Marcus Corbett is the last temptation of Christ. What role did Harvey Keitel play? In Marcus Corbett is the last temptation of Christ. What role did Harvey Keitel play? Here's a hint. He was something of a bad lieutenant. <laughs> He also spoke in Brooklyn accent. How are we going to time? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. You're all done, right? Okay, markers down, pencils, uh, put things up. <laughs> Judas is scary. Judas, Judas, four on the floor. They all take it. Clean, clean, moving on. All right, this one's where, actually, as I said, we're getting the easy part. This quote comes from which film? In space, no one can hear you scream. In space, no one can hear you scream. You know this one, John? You must. What's that? You know this one. Prometheus. <laughs> what? First of all, it's not a quote, it's a tagline. Right. Yeah, don't say that. That's right, because there's a place. You can't get caught. It's a, it's a, it's a silent film. You haven't seen it. Thursday Man on the Moon by Jim 
George and Melia. Time's up. Uh, yeah, you all got it, right? Kelly, that's correct. All right, that's right. Four, four corrects. No, no, nobody, there were no aliens. Did no, 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 it's all similar, alien. Richard Gere plays the lead role in the 1983 remake of Breathless. Who played the lead in the original 1960 version of the film? Who played the lead role in the original 1960 version of Breathless? The answer is Jerry Lee Lewis. Isn't that correct? <laughs> Whoa, the next one. Jerry Lee Lewis is actually featured in both versions of the film. Oh, yeah. Music. Yeah, right, exactly. They wouldn't let him on the set. Right, right. <laughs> Even in France, he was yeah. to, to, to be allowed onto a movie set. His entourage was Roman Polanski. Yes. Hey. <laughs> How are we doing? Two. Marker down. Signs up. Jean Paul Belmondo. Jean Paul Belmondo. Paul Belmondo. Jean Paul Belmondo. Bill Blake. Yeah, yeah, just, heavy on this one. So we, uh, we're saying Paul Belmondo. Okay. That's the usual one. Yeah, okay. They will, they will accept it. I do not agree with the judges on that one. Please 
sit down at the last remaining table here in the shadowy corner of Duke. Bill White, how are you on that computer? Look at this. It's on the screen. It's on the screen. So far, so good. So do you guys remember the rules? You want me to go over them again? All right, here's what's going to happen. I don't want you to do it, but this will take forever. Here's what's going to happen. Bill is going to ask a question. I will repeat the question in an obnoxious way. You will have 30 seconds from the moment the question is asked to write the answer down on those whiteboards. When you hear the... When you hear the... And do that means put your markers in and put your whiteboards up, and that will be when we look at the answers and tell you who's right and who's wrong. Here on scene one, take two, go! What song will Bill Murray's character up every morning in Groundhog Day? In the movie Groundhog Day, what song played on the clock radio every morning that Bill Murray woke up? See some fast, fast acting markers here. Ten, nine, eight, seven, forget it. Mark is down, things up, and you're all right. I got you, baby. Right. 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 It is going to get furious here right now. So, featuring the late Republican congressman from California. Cher? Yeah. <laughs> what well-known actor is Francis Ford Coppola's nephew? What well is Francis Ford Coppola's nephew. Those who were eliminated by virtue of the Helen Hunt question in the first round are now going to strangle people. I should say that I have, I have nothing, neither John nor I had anything to do with the questions. And in fact, we're not revealing who had anything to do with the questions. So be... I can actually think of two acceptable answers to this. Yeah, there are two. Yeah. I think, uh, there are two answers that I will accept. Oh. <laughs> and we put them both down. Nothing, I can't, I don't know what to do. Sign up! Alright, here we go. Boom, 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 they're all correct. Yeah. And we'll yeah. Four and four for a bonus points. There you go. Ready? I'm gonna do... Alright, no, you can't be yelling it out. No, never mind, you ruined it. You got to The other answer is Jason Schwartz. No, so, listen to me. Don't start yelling like that. But it was in a fair way. If they hurt you, then everyone gets everyone gets an extra point. How about that? Yeah. Alright, this quote comes from which film? One morning I shot an elephant in my pajamas. I was got my pajamas. I don't know. One morning I shot an elephant in my pajamas. I was got my pajamas. I'll never know. What? Everyone loves my Woody Allen.
Paul Belmondo. Well, I accept Sally. Hold it up one more time. Well, there we go. The only, the only ones who did not get the correct answer were the Mr. DeMille's, because they only put Sally. Oh, no, excuse me, the only ones who got the correct answer were Sally and Girl. These guys said Sally, and we're robbed. We're robbed. Let's face it. It's the way it goes. All right, in what's Keating Gilbert Gray? Who played the role of Arnie Gray? In what's Keating Gilbert Gray? Who played the role of Arnie Gray? Well, I can think of two answers. Only one is acceptable. All right, we'll only accept one answer. And as you go down the great family tree. Great fun. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Markers down. Cards up. Cards up. The camera all around. The answer is. Tiebreaker round. All right. Tiebreaker round. I'll tell you the other two. 
And other two teams, please, yes. Full Mental Jacket got six. Full Mental Jacket got six. Good round of applause. And the Dove Quality Showings with five. With five. If you have to start making your way off the stage now, because we'd like to keep going eventually. Uh, thank you very much to all these Shirley's. Yeah. Uh, ready for the tiebreaker. Oh, yeah, wait, wait, wait. You don't go away at the end. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> we have consolation prizes. Yay! Yay! Oh. Okay. Do we know what the tiebreaker question is? Oh, I'm just going to read it because the machine is I turned off the machine. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Jack Nicholson earned his first Oscar for Best Actor in a Leading Role for which character uh, in which film? So it's a two part answer. Well, very confusing. Jack Nicholson won his first Oscar. Best Actor. The Oscar is the category of Best Actor in a Leading Role. What was the movie? And what was the character? I know the movie was Witches and Easter. <laughs> Two, one, markers down. Alright, markers down, markers down. Come up, come up, come up, come up, come up. They have the same answer, McMurphy. And one will go ahead and correct. Friends of the Heart, 
Irish uh, Luke, Mike, and Fred, please come to the stage and take your table right there. Thank you very much. Now, will the team known as the Low End please stand? The Low End are sponsored by Dick Films, and they bring to you the competitors Chris Mary, Kevin Klein, Kevin Klein, wow, and Michael Schroeder. Now, Elizabeth Taylor's Soldier Spy, the best team name so far. Elizabeth Taylor's Soldier Spy will be sponsored by Women and Honey. In your best battle star relaxing t shirt, and the Women and Hunter is the best friend of the Polo and the third is Ted Horn and Gray, and the battle star relaxing car. And finally, the Real Deal, Colin J. Rich. Real Deal, sponsored by J. Rich Clothing for Men and very much for taking this so seriously. It didn't deserve it. All right. Are you all familiar with how it works? You've all been watching. I know you've been watching from behind the screen. Now this is the time to compete. Bill, what is the first question? Here we go. What was Dustin Hoffman's cross-dressing soap opera character's name in Tootsie? What was Dustin Hoffman's so opera cross-dressing thing. <laughs> what was the name so of Dustin Hoffman's female version of himself in Twisty? The name of his good <laughs> What was Because he was playing, he was playing an actress who was playing a character. Right. But we were looking for the name of the woman that he was playing. Alright, we have two the name of the one Margaret Sound. Cards up? Cards up. Cards up. Cards up. Dixie, no. Blank, no. Helen Hunt, no. <laughs> Dorothy, yes. Do you know the last name? Who wants to know? I would like to know the last name. You're going to win. You're pulling it out of nowhere. For an extra point. Award. <laughs> he has that power. What was the name of Dustin Hoffman's male character in that? Michael. Are you competing? <laughs> I'm sorry, this woman just took your. Please don't yell it at Michael Dorsey. What's his, what's his name? Oh, yeah. uh, well. All right, see, these people are going to get it, too. These people are going to get it. No, I'm going to say these people are going to get it. <laughs> they were not going to get it. These guys just listen to you and write it down. So. <laughs> Sorry, Christmas is canceled. This quote comes from which film? A lot can happen in the middle of nowhere. Now, Bill, why is this a quote or a tagline? This is a tagline. I tagline. This is a tagline. It may have been a quote, actually, but it's a tagline. But it's best known as the tagline of this film. A lot can happen in the middle of nowhere. Please don't talk out loud to each other. <laughs> this family in particular. <laughs> Two, one, markers down, put it up. Cards up! I see Fargo, Fargo, Blank, and Castaway. See, I'm just Fargo. <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor's Soldier Spy and the Love End both got that correct. Who played the role Joe and sang Old Man River in Showboat in 1933? Old Man River, that old man river, he must know something, but don't say nothing. Clearly not in the morning. You know what I mean, That's the last song. Was it, uh, <laughs> I'm tired of living and afraid of guys. <laughs> oh, sorry, hold on. All right. Uh, no, no, yes. No. The real deal, Jay Rich. We have a lot of questions on the cartridge. All those things. Paul Rosen was the correct answer. So I'm tired of living and afraid of dying. Alright, here's a gimme. What was the director?
director David Lynch's first feature film. That was David Lynch's first feature film.
Let's go from lowest to highest. Lowest to highest. The real deal, Jay Rich. The real, our, our fourth runner, the real deal, Jay Rich. Thank you.
five, four, three, three up, two, one. Markers down. Markers up. I see. Calendar <laughs> is Australia. Australia. Everyone gets the point except for the trivia PGs. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> and a last minute rehearsal change from Portugal to France. <laughs> portrayed Max Bialystok in which movie? The actor is named Lane, the character is Max Bialystok. What is the name of the movie? Everyone is ready, everyone is almost ready. Getting closer. And five, four, three, two, one. Mark is down, four is up.
Okay. So, starting with, um, we'll go from these points to the question. Start in the middle this time. Private 
It's rare, a little known. How many people know this is a sequel to Ferris Bueller's Day Off? <laughs> kind of a prequel, actually. A prequel. Yeah. Oh, uh, Art is down, everybody. I see two Denzel Washingtons. Denzel Washington all around. The answer is Denzel Washington and Glory. Well done, everybody.
after being abandoned due to too much traffic. You know, you could have just said, what is the name of the robot sent Earth? I could have said. But because we're in Northampton, we could have put in a little, a little climate change warning. <laughs> All these three cars have to have a lesson. <laughs> we like rummage with our tofu. <laughs> All right, mark it down. Mark it down. Mark it up. Eve, Eve, Eva, Eve. Eve. Get it? He was getting Eve to. He was kind of biblical. Wally sort of pronounced it as Eva. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. I'm not kidding. Let's just move on. Whoa. He's alive. Oh, hang on, hang on. There's some discussion here. What is the question? What is the issue? No, I did not accept. What did it say in the credits?
the second runner up takes it. Okay. Name the 1980 film that featured 
of the brothers, Randy and Dennis Quaid, Stacey and James Keach, David Keith and Robert Carradine, and Christopher and Nicholas Guest. 1980 film it was originally supposed to have a soundtrack done by Bob Dylan, but it was instead done by Ryan Cooter. How's that? I'll help you out. Yeah, Ryan Cooter did that really tough. <laughs> I wrote this in case Jane and Genesis made it this far with the time breaker when I did I really knew that he was going to be in library. Time's up. Good answer. Yeah. Long Riders is correct. Which film is this quote from? I am big. 
It's the pictures that got small. I am big. It's the pictures that got small. What is the film from? Where's the film that pulled? Bill White is the answer big? <laughs> that would have been a reasonable guess if, if you didn't know what you were talking about. Yeah. Four, three, two, one. Hearts up. Uh, yes, yes, no, blank. <laughs> Lucid Productions and the Odd Jobs get yes for Sunset Boulevard. The usual suspects get a big no for King Kong. Although I'm sure that that's what King Kong was thinking. All right. <laughs> Who played King Arthur in the 1967 musical film? Camelot, who played King Arthur in the 1967 musical film Camelot. Yes for the usual suspects. No for odd jobs with Richard Chamberlain. He was in the musical The Thornbirds. And the real people are, are apparently here just to prank the system. I was, I was gonna say, it wouldn't be a hint on that one to say, which British actor was in the Harry Potter films? Because it could be anyone. Alright. In the film The Apartment, oh yeah. What does Jack Lemmon's character use to straighten spaghetti? Because he's quirky. <laughs> he's quirky. He's quirky. And a bachelor. He's a quirky bachelor. You have to understand that this time spaghetti was considered to be extremely exotic food. <laughs> you haven't gotten bachelors in the city, have you? Oh, sorry. Okay, here we go. Marker's down, please. Marker's up. I want to see if you guys know this time. Stockings, good guess. Maybe even an improvement on the actual thing. Tennis wrap. Tennis racket is correct. Underwear. I have to leave this up to the judges. You, this is proof of intent, right? Yes. So that is yes for music production. Yes for the odd jobs. No for the usual suspects. And what is going on, real people? <laughs> Here we go! Name the actor who was born at Archibald Alexander Reach. The name has been invoked once tonight already. Name the actor who was born Archibald Alexander Reach. All right, I think they're all done. You all have your final answers, right? Squeaky, all right. Yes, 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 yes. Gary Grant is correct all around. All right, in which film did Marilyn Monroe... Has there ever been a trivia game played where that question was not asked? No. <laughs> in which film did Marilyn Monroe play Lorelei Lee? Lorelei Lee. Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe, famous American film actress. You may have heard of her. This is the name of a character she played in a movie, by which I mean she pretended to be another person in front of a camera. There we go. Lorelei Lee, let's see. Some like it hot, some like it hot, some like it hot. Gentlemen prefer blondes. The answer is gentlemen prefer blondes. Well done. What country's Olympic bobsled team was the subject of the great John Candy film? Cool Runnings. Thank you for the John Candy slow clap in the background. 
What country's Olympic bobsled team was the subject of the movie Cool Runnings? What country fielded a bobsled team and they made a movie out of it? And that movie was called Cool Runnings. Here we go! Let me Our give you a hint. They don't make movies out of bobsled teams in countries that have snow. But they do make them about Jamaica, 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 Jamaica. Very good. Well, I the One point all around, that's the end. Do we have a clear, untested winner? I know in, in our, our third runner-up, in last place, the two correct answers real people. And then, our second runner-up, the usual suspects, the four correct answers. And our first runner-up, the odd jobs, with five, giving you your winners of take six, with seven correct answers, listed for nothing. Big round of applause for all the guests, select your consolation prizes, Now, while we wait on a final ruling on Eve versus Eva, the thing that could throw this whole thing over, over into chaos. All right, here we go. We have a 10 minute intermit, uh, intermission. We're not gonna show you the dancing popcorn cups, but you're welcome to help yourselves uh, to all the great fine food up there. And there is popcorn up there, but we're not gonna show you here. Help you, uh, Get your snacks, eat them out there, don't bring them here. Now, what else you can do out there, I believe, is you can sign up for a raffle, right? So, right. For an iPad, a product that John holds dearly to his heart, so. If you want to win an iPad, sign up for the raffle at the concession stand. Make sure to enjoy all those concessions. When we come back, we'll raffle off that iPad. We'll have the audience participation event for more fun and prizes. And you will see the final winners of this thing. So please do come back and have a good time. Okay, you want to do all of the above, right? Prize for everybody. Oh, the safety. 
All right, so you need to keep your hand up until the slide with the correct answer is shown. If you've answered correctly, we're going to work on the honor system and shame, the Yankee attempt of Yankee shame. You're going to have uh, you remain standing, and if you answer, you know, if you answer incorrectly, the opposite of remaining standing is sitting down. So you understand how that works. If you answer, if you had raised your right hand for A, and the answer is A, remain standing. If you have raised your right hand for A, and the answer is B, sit down. Self-policing. Do you understand? We keep going until there is one person standing. And we're watching. Here we go. It's going to be fast, everybody. Go, Bill. In Dirty Dancing, Baby is heading off to which college at Summer's End? A, Mount Holyoke. B, Smith College. Bing, bing, bing. The answer is A, Mount Holyoke. Down, anyone at Smith, Smith College? Sit down. Right, you have B, sit down. All right, you may not put your hands down. I'll do the next one. Which 1969 film starring Lloyd Bridges and Shirley Jones was shot in Amherst? Is it A, Silent Night, Deadly Night, B, Silent Night, Lonely Night? Oh, come on. This is crazy. Okay. And the answer is... Silent Night, Lonely Night. B, Silent Night, Lonely Night. Whoa. The Silent Night, Deadly Night was a slasher film where Santa was the killer. Alright, we'll it down. Bill, go. The film Malice was shot in Northampton in 1993 featuring which actor that attended UMass Amherst? That's A for Bill Pullman, B for Richard Gere. Right hand A for Bill Pullman, left hand B for Richard Gere. And the answer is... William Pullman. Bill Pullman. UMass graduate. We got 20 questions. Which Academy Award-winning actor appeared in a film shot in the Pirate Valley accompanied by his probation officer? <laughs> right hand for A, Robert Downey Jr. Left hand for B, Mel Gibson. The answer is Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Sit down if you got it wrong. Keep standing. Here we go. We're down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the final eight, oh, then nine. All right, here we go. Which two films were shot on location at the former Northampton State Hospital? A, In Dreams and Cider Has Rules, or B, Malice and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Right hand for A, left hand for B, finalize your hands. The answer is In Dreams. A, In Dreams <laughs> and Cider Has Rules. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, go. What do John Hodgman, Russell Brand, Helen Mirren, Jennifer Garner, and Nick Nolte all have in common? A, they all attended the same acting school. B, they all appeared in the 2011 remake of Arthur. C, they all have mustaches. <laughs> and glowing skin. A, the answer is B. <laughs> We all appeared in the remake of Arthur. We got it right this time. We fixed that movie. <laughs> Go. The reincarnation of Peter Proud, uh, filmed in 1975, was filmed in Amherst and A. Holyoke and Springfield, B. Northampton and Greenfield. A. Holyoke and Springfield, B. Northampton and Greenfield. Here we go. Boom! Holyoke and Springfield. What do we got left? What do we got left? <laughs> Colette, are you in or are you out? You raise your right long hand. Hey.
uh, one more chance. Anybody want to throw them 10 bucks for a raffle ticket? We're happy to take your money. Okay? All right, now, and this is for this is to raffle off this piece of original art, beautiful piece of art, has uh, the Guild Art Center on it. I'm going to pull out a ticket just to make it interesting. I'm going to put a piece of popcorn in there. Who knows? <laughs> You never know what's gonna happen. Maybe the popcorn will win. <laughs> Got something? Oh, the number. <laughs> maybe there's someone's name right on here. Three oh five. One, two, nine. Three oh five. One, two, nine. Three oh five. We have a winner. Now, is this the grand prize? Yes. This is uh, an iPad? Yes. Oh, you have it here? Yes, donated by Paragus IT. Paragus IT. Paragus Strategic IT. This is the iPad here. And I will sign it for you. Yeah, the middle the winner might not be here. So. No, no, no. This one's calling for it. Don't, yeah, don't. Darkness, 
In which of the following films did Al Pacino not star? The Dog of the Afternoon, Looking for Richard, Serpico, Henry IV. In which of the following films did Al Pacino not star, and indeed not appear at all, correct? No way. He was not, not just that he wasn't the leading man, he ripped right. One of those, all right, there you go, mark it down. All correct. Henry IV, Henry IV, continue. Which film is this quote from? Major Mr. Allnut is what we are putting this world to rise for. Where's the giveaway in this question? Nature, Mr. Alnut, is what we are put into this world to rise above. <laughs> Time's running down. Four, three, two, one. Mark is down. Cards up. The African Queen, the African Queen, dead to Poe. <laughs> The All Nut Sanction. Next. Who <laughs> played Deep Throat in All President's Men? And remember, who played. Opportunity to make a mistake here. Who played Deep Throat in All the President's Men? Who played Deep Throat in All the President's Men? <laughs> I know the answer. Three, two, one. Mark it down, put it up. Nice. Holbrook, Sutherland, Holbrook. I'll hold yes, it yes. Yes. Here we go. Name the 1940 Walt Disney animated film that is set to pieces of classical music conducted by Leopold Stokowski. Yeah, everyone seems to know this. They're all grown. <laughs> all right, next question. They all get a point. <laughs> Fantasia is the answer, obviously. Erase them, erase them, erase them. Which writer, actor, and director was born Alan Stewart Conningsburg? Which writer, director, actor was born Alan Stewart Conningsburg? <laughs> Five, four, yeah. everyone had an answer? Yeah. They all got right. Woody Allen is correct. <laughs> we gotta just move this far. Right, here we go. You, you wanna read this one, John? This one? in your wheelhouse. I don't know the answer to this question. What was the name of the spaceship in 2001, A Space Odyssey? I presume the main spaceship. The main spaceship. Yeah, the main spaceship. It was, it was called the main. Eve. It was called Eve. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. We're going to talk about that in a minute, guys. Two, one, mark us down. Got that down. Damn you. Hal, discovery is correct. <laughs> Alright, here we go. In the films, the films eight and a half, La Dolce Vita, Today and Tomorrow, all showcase the same male lead. Who was it? It is not Patrick Spell it right. <laughs> Yeah, variant spellings will be accepted. If somebody can win on it, Eva, then we can spell it. And time's up, cards up. Marcello Mastriani, Marcello Mastriani, Marcello Mastriani, all differently spelled, all the correct answer. That's it! That's it! the director of Toy Story 3. I wrote him, I said, this is what I wrote to him. I said, Lee, my friend, personal friend, <laughs> at a trivia contest, bizarrely, some dispute, what is the name of Wally's love interest? One word answer from Lee. Eve, E-V-E, -E, is the correct answer. Now, it does not affect the results, because if uh, we basically disqualified that team to go to the tiebreaker and then they won the tiebreaker. So well done for them.
But let me just say, there will be law in this room. Do you understand? <laughs> you don't just pick the answers you can like. All right, now, do we have an answer? All right, here we go. Our second runner-up. With nine points, loses, what? You tell me and I'll say it. Oh, second uh, runner-up, Alan Spindies. Yes, yes, William Styron, all right. Whoa! Are you guys? 
guys playing a game with me? William Styrum. Ava? Someone up there must like me at William Styrum? Is this an art project? Are you gaslighting me now? No, I say no. Finally, these guys. Massachusetts. Only ask for accountability when it's a Republican president. But these guys have never done that. Fritz Lano, too. Were you Fritz Lano? Yeah. Alright, let's go. Come on. Famous scene in Annie Hall. We've all six big men black lobsters in the kitchen. What does Alvy Singer suggest using to scare a lobster out of his hiding place behind the refrigerator? What? <laughs> What does he use, or what does he threaten to use? What does he suggest to use? He uses it. He brandishes. He brandishes this thing? Long time to say All right, time is up. Mark is down. Put it up. Pot of boiling water, blank, tennis. Well, well this is going to hurt. <laughs> Tennis racket. He did have a tennis racket. He did have a tennis racket. I think he was using that to drain the lobsters. Just drain the lobsters. Yes, it's an homage to the apartment. No one advances. John Travolta appeared in which of these four films? Blow up, blow out, blow away, or blown away? Blow up. Blow away. Blown away. Little maids of twisty past. Five, four, three, two, one. Sweet. The answer is blow out, blow out, blow out. Everyone is correct. Alright. Moving on. Here we go. Which film is this quote from? The Boston Beach <laughs> John knows his person. <laughs> I knew the act of the, the guy who said that line. Yeah. Really? Is this is just a line you've ever heard personally? <laughs> Time's up. Raise up your cards. Stop. Stop. You're wrong. Yes. No. No. And just to show you I'm not heartless, I'll accept it. Spinal Tap. Right, the movie's not Spinal Tap. Even though it's called This Is Spinal Tap. Yeah, I'm not a monster. <laughs> In which Quentin Tarantino film are the characters' code names the names of colors? A movie I saw at the Pleasant Street Theater. Yeah. With my dad. <laughs> Awkward evening. Time's <laughs> up. Reservoir dogs, reservoir dogs, reservoir dogs. Yes, absolutely. Reservoir dogs. These guys can invest as reservoir dogs. Of course they got that one right. Next, Peter Firth played the troubled young man in how <laughs> uh, Young man Alan Strang and Equus, what atrocity did Strang commit to bring him to the attention of the psychiatrist played by Richard Burton, who seems to feature rather prominently? In the, in the trivia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any trivia questions about the trivia quiz now? <laughs> Alright, it's all correct. He blinds horses, or blinded horses with a metal spike. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> It was our company. There's no way you were supposed to go. There you go. Moving along. Name Walt Disney's first traditional animation feature length film. First, the first feature length film in animation from the D. 
Disney. By traditional animation, we mean hand-drawn animation. Right. right. Cell animation. Cell animation. Not that early 1930s CGI. I thought you thought. The answer is Tron, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, Snow White, Snow White, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves is the correct. And you guys, what is going on over here? <laughs> but it's actually Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. <laughs> Was the correct, really? All right, so points for style, yeah. correct, correct. I'm mean, into all of them anyway. Bad. <laughs> Next. Which star was born Marion Morrison? Which star was born Marion Morrison? Did he brandish a tennis racket at any point in his career? <laughs> no. All right, time is up. Show me the time is up, and what do we have? It is John Wayne and Alan Wayne. So that is yes for movies love the afternoon, and uh, Mr. Deville's uh, Mr. Deville's, and no for Monsters of Filmland. Bang! Cool. Bang. Cool. Bang. You gotta say this for Monsters of Filmland. Filmland. They may be horribly imprecise, but they bring a lot of energy, a lot of contention <laughs> to the contest. They keep me guessing, they think I'm going crazy. Movie, Love in the Afternoon. They have a very strangely titled team. Very awkward to say. There's a parenthesis that starts the title, it's not even capitalized. But they look really good. And then of course, the funny hats. Boy oh boy. Uh, of all the competitors, these are certainly three teams. All right. <laughs> what, do we, what do we have for the results? We have a tie. Good. <laughs> There's a tie between Love in the Afternoon and Mr. DeMille. Say goodbye to your monsters of Calumet. The Bill Buckner's in trivia. <laughs> William Skyrom, that's going between the legs. That's what that is. They could have picked that right now. Tiebreaker round. Go, Bill. I right, named the two co stars of the 1946 version of The Postman Always Rings Twice. Two co stars, 1946 film version of The Postman. Always rings twice. I know one of them is Kevin Costner. <laughs> and well, they, they slammed it already. All right, All right. got it. Lana Turner and John Garfield. John Garfield and Lana Turner. Only one can be correct. <laughs> this, this is very good. This is tough. This is tough. I mean, uh, what are the names of the newly engaged couple who seek? Help and Dr. Frank and Curtis Castle in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. What are the names, not the people who play them, but what's the name of the newly engaged couple? The characters' names is what we're looking for here. We'll see help with Dr. Frank and Curtis Castle in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. There, there will be no reciting of lines for this. <laughs> All right, cards up. The answer is Brad and Janet, not blank. Clean your boards, adjust your hats, <laughs> and we'll bring back Elizabeth Taylor, Soldier Spy. <laughs> this is for the great big prize, the number one spot. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. Is everyone ready? The championship round. This determines, well, the winner, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Your 
work that out. All right. Deep breaths. Here we go. 20 seconds to answer the questions. First question. John? Thanks you for saving the long one for me. <laughs> Which film is this quote from? The music is about to stop, and we are holding the greatest pile of odoriferous excrement in the history of capitalism. The music is about to stop, and we are holding the greatest pile of odoriferous excrement in the history of capitalism. This is a quote from a movie. I have a feeling this is a uh, question that Bill Dwight wrote. I, I didn't see that. I know the answer, though. Let's see what we got. Nashville. Elizabeth Gelsby says, is Nashville, Mr. DeMille say, almost crossed out. <laughs> the answer is... Margin. 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 <laughs> it's a recent film, so I suppose. Okay, no television movies allowed. <laughs> <laughs> 1966, Franco Zeffirelli directed Jane Eyre. Name the two featured actors who played Rochester and Jane. Rochester? Yeah, 1996, Franco Zeffirelli. Director. Sorry, 19, I don't know anything about this. 1996, 1996 Franco Zeffirelli. What did I say? It is 66, all right. I, I said 96 before I made a mistake. Stop the clock. Give him five more seconds, because I messed up. Uh, the movie was in 1966. <laughs> <laughs> See what one said. Here we go. Oh, uh, hey, everybody. Uh, in case it makes a difference, it was actually 1966. I made it as long as the audience liked it. All right, very good. Put them up. Oliver Reed and Julie Christie. William Hurt Trump, April uh, 1996. Well, at least they made a guess. The film was made, and it was, it's, it is 1996, not 66. There were versions of many I, I apologize. I got, I got, it's, it's all my fault, everybody. I, I, I truly apologize. It's gone. It's it never happened. happened. Don't worry. I am very sorry. <laughs> Name Michelangelo Antonioni's first English language film. It starred David Hemmings, Vanessa Redgrave, and Sarah Miles. All of whom and was released in 1996. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes they were clothes. Also a tennis movie. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes without racket. <laughs> Ding bong. Blow up. Blow up. Correct. Blow up. Very, very nice. A 1966 film. That's correct. That's right. Which film is this quote from? Damn, we're in a tight spot. Every movie. <laughs> Which film states the obvious? Damn, we're in a tight spot. Oh, yes. And, and sorry about the cussing. It's in the title. I wouldn't have said that. Before. I don't go there. I know this one now. You do? Yes. The answer is, oh brother, where art thou? And not die hard. That's right. I just remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. We're getting down to it. We're down to it. Let's go. Which of these films did Alfred Hitchcock not direct? Blackmail, Easy Virtue, Home for the Dark. This is not an Alfred Hitchcock movie. One of these three films is not directed by the Master of Suspense, Alfred Hitchcock. Creator of that rare movie that only Bill White knows, Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> only Bill, Bill White's one of the two people who can make Psycho references. Oh. Both parties say Home Before Dark. The answer is Home Before Dark. <laughs> in what year does the story in Blade Runner take place? I think I know this one. How far in the future? How whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, good point. <laughs> <laughs> I just said it, Jimmy. Just give me. away. <laughs> boy, oh boy. 1996. What year? 2001. The answer is... 2019 is the correct answer. Right around the corner, everybody. Get ready. We've got Roman Uprising right around the corner. How many direct 
Eric has worked on the Wizard of Oz. This gives John an opportunity to do his lollipop thing. Do it, do it. Come on, do it. Come on. You heard it on the radio already. I didn't study up on that, the whole bunch of land sequence. Uh, oh, where? Oh, there we go. How many directors we don't need the number? Two? Victor, one, Victor Fleming. The answer is three. Three. Victor Fleming is the only one named in the credits. Mervyn Leroy also worked on it. King Vidor directed the black and white Kansas scenes at the beginning and end of the movie. I think you can say both were wrong. Yeah. Ouch. Pete, Pete, Georgie, and Dim are known by what collective noun in a clockwork form? Pete, Georgie, and Dim. Didn't they sing in that movie? Didn't they sing the representative? We wish to invade your home and terrorize you. Uh, my Droogies or the Droogs? Either answer. Droogs. I would, I would take either answer, personally. What do you say, judges? Well, it's, it's true that the Malcolm McDowell character referred to them as the Droogies, as in Wally referring to Eve as Eva, so I don't know. I'll leave that to you. The judges are accepting both. All right. that okay. Okay. Because Malcolm McDowell does not have a speech impediment like that robot. <laughs> Who played Regina Giddens in The Little Foxes? In the film The Little Foxes, who was the character, who was the actress who played Regina Giddens? Little Foxes. Just a hint, it's a human actress on a box. Time's up. Cards up. Betty oh. Davis. The answer is Betty Davis. There was. I can understand why you made that confusion. Uh, oh, do you want to explain? Well, it was a film called Foxes. That wasn't Little Foxes, starring Jodie Foster and Matt Dillon. Nerd. I understand. Why do you make that mistake? Because you're resident. Oh. Who played the platonic buddy role opposite Elizabeth Taylor in Butterfield 8? The platonic buddy. Yes. The platonic friend. It's the roles that John usually has to in. Not opposite Elizabeth Taylor, are we? Okay, hands up. The answer uh, is Tony Randall or Mickey Rooney. The correct answer is Eddie Fisher. Eddie Fisher was not a platonic relationship with her offstage at the end. Alright, so I think we're getting down to it. Alright, go. go. Three generations of the Kirk Douglas family act in which 2003 film? Unfortunately, I do know the name of this movie. Yeah, great film. Uh, I did not see it, but I know the name of it. Did you see it? No. No human saw this movie, right? <laughs> I, it was, it was I think I know the name of it. Right after Kirk Douglas' stroke. <laughs> whoa, whoa, giveaway. You're wrong. You're wrong. Is the movie called Diamonds? No, it's called It Runs in the Family. It Runs in the Family. Oh. But it's about Diamond Thieves? Yes, it's right. about Diamond Thieves, though. So John doesn't get it right either. <laughs> What does the number of seven refer to in the 1995 thriller Seven? Sorry, 1955. Sorry, 1955 <laughs> thriller Seven. What does the number seven refer to in the 1995 thriller? Okay, answers are ready. Prepare. Put them up. Yes, yes, the seven deadly sins. But you're going to them all out. <laughs> Have time? What are they? Quickly, sir. Uh, rap, avarice, sloth, pride, lust, envy, gluttony. Yes! Oh, right. <laughs> uh, the name of the Bondi Daughters. <laughs> <laughs> Which 
actor was born John Charles Carter. John Charles Carter, you all know him. What, what was his stage? Taylor Kitsch. <laughs> what was his stage? His film name. John Charles Carter. The answer is Charlie. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie. If you say Char Charlton he Hess? No. no. What is that supposed to be? What is the beginning of Charlton Heston. Okay. The beginning of Charlton Heston. And you say Trub. <laughs> what were you going to say? Barry Bosley. <laughs> the answer is. It's Charlton Heston. Charlton Heston. That's the former head of the NRA. Is that, do you accept Charlton Hess? Put it up. Put it up. Put it up. I, this was. I said Charlton Hess. I read it as Charlton Hess. Of course, he did say it when you asked him what he was saying. What, what yeah, what he did say Eva. He said Charlton Hess. So. I think the intent is clear there, Chris. And then me. <laughs> Acceptable, I agree. Yeah. All right, this is, uh, this is the penultimate moment, is it? I don't know. Are we have a tie? Oh, are we tabulating? We're, We're tabulating. tabulating. We're finding out. Stand by. It's a tie, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, we get to go to my collection. It's a great time for me to tell you my story about Bill Pullman. <laughs> Come to the roost and I'll tell you later. All right, go ahead, Bill. All right, I'm going to refer to my questions. These won't you do the question, and then I'll make up a question on the spot. All right. Who has won more Academy Awards, Catherine Hepburn or Meryl Streep? Who has won more Academy Awards, Catherine Hepburn or Meryl Streep? Who has won more Academy Awards? Catherine Hepburn or Meryl Streep? Totally die. Totally die. Time is up. Both Catherine Hepburn. The answer is? It's Catherine Hepburn. Catherine Hepburn. Catherine Hepburn. Catherine Hepburn. Meryl Streep just won her third. Meryl Streep's been nominated for 17 more than any other actor ever in history. What is the name of the film that Ruth Gordon performed in that earned her her only Academy Award? Mm. What's the name of the film that Ruth Gordon performed in? Mm. I think you know this one, John. Mm. Three, two, one. Mark this down. Both say Harold and Maude. It's Rosemary's Rosemary's Baby. Who was the All right, uh, we're going to go old British French movie then. Or, or, I will make up a question. Do you want to do this? John's question. <laughs> Here's John's question. He's still making it. Well, Dr. Who is not a movie. <laughs> well, there is a Dr. Who. There is a Dr. Who. Who played the doctor in the one movie made of Dr. Who? No, 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 no. I don't even know the answer to that one. Uh, this is a, 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 a question for chance to earn two points. See, I wrote based, one out in advance. Based on, my favorite, on one of my favorite movies called Watership Down. What is the name? of the rabbit who can tell the future in the movie Watership Down. And, for an extra point, what is the alternate name in the rabbit language of the character known as Bigwig? <laughs> Boy, they're running furiously now. Two, one, time's up. Blank cards up. Oh, oh. Hey. One point for Fiverr, who can tell the future and watership down. Sorry, guys. And of course, the Lapine name for Big Leaf is Flaley, meaning furhead. We watched that movie, everybody. We have a winner.
do it. My former boss, Dana Jensen, There's another thing in there. Yeah, there's a plastic whistle. Yeah. Well, Bill Dwight, first of all, another round of applause for the mystic of Bill's for the winners. The first round is up, and the show is still in five. And I know him. And I've been paying attention. I would not have been my death water sit down question. The final question of the day. But it was a fair question. It was answered fairly, and everyone did a great job, including my co-host, Bill Dwight. Thank you very much. Part of this whole experience and extend it on throughout the season. And then of course join us next year when we do this bigger, better, maybe with even actually film footage for some. And yeah. maybe John I, I will definitely be back next year. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank you. Only if you support the Amherst Theater in the present season. Otherwise, you're cutting you people.